I take this opportunity to introduce Uma Ma'am. Uma Ma'am is an entrepreneur, analyst, social worker, and a writer. Her entrepreneurial interests are in the fields of technology, education, and tourism. Her travel consulting company works in tourism data and is the first civil organization to work with the Indian Army to take civilians to Siachen Glacier. She has co-founded an NGO called Durga India, which helps in women and child safety issues and has been the recipient of the Asian Voice Charity Award UK for upcoming NGO in 2016. She also heads the Matra Shakti wing of Akhil Bharatya Purva Sanik Seva Parishad, a veterans organization founded by ESM and the Sangh Parivar. At present, Uma Ma'am is also on the board of governors at the Indian Institute of Management, Vishakapatna. Over to you, Uma Ma'am, you can begin the session. The topic for today, uh, which Uma Ma'am will be covering is learning opportunities for students. Thank you. Thank you, Swati. Uh, thank you, Reema, for having me over. And uh, it's a pleasure to, to be uh, talking to all of you, interacting with all of you. Um, the challenge, of course, being an afternoon session, I do hope, uh, you know, um, it's interesting enough for everybody to stay awake and not doze off in front of their devices. Okay, good afternoon, young scholars, um, all of you who are, you know, who've logged in. And uh, believe me, it's a pleasure to be addressing all of you. So one of my favorite quotes, you know, when uh, uh, Swati asked me to pick a topic, I said uh, learning opportunities is a good, uh, you know, um, good subject because uh, in today's scenario, all of us are learning different things. And uh, as students, I'm sure you would appreciate that. So one of my favorite quotes is you don't learn when you only read or listen. You learn when you start questioning. Now, the ironical part is uh, all through our childhood learning journey, um, you know, we are dissuaded from questioning. We are told that, um, you know, whatever I tell you, listen to it and that's it kind of a thing. But unfortunately, learning doesn't happen that way. Learning happens only when, uh, you know, your curiosity um, goes up and you start asking uh, relevant questions, you start uh, getting relevant answers, uh, and then your curiosity is picked a little more, and then that leads to more uh, questioning. You know, that's, that's um, the, that, like I said, it's, the, uh, it's an ironical part, and, uh, you know, uh, because we are not allowed to question, we are introduced to the concept of stereotyping, you know? So, a uh, classic example that I would give you is uh, you know, there's, there's a classroom filled with uh, students and uh, the drawing teacher walks in and the drawing teacher says, I want all of you to uh, draw a countryside image that comes to your mind. And everybody out of, you know, out of those 15, 20 kids, everybody is busy scribbling away on their white papers except for one child. And, uh, you know, he just hands in a blank sheet of paper to the teacher at the end of the class. And the teacher says, um, why is your paper blank? I asked you to draw something. So the child says, uh, yes, uh, I did. So the teacher says, explain your drawing then. So the child says, you asked us to draw a countryside and I visualized uh, a meadow full of grass. And uh, so she said, okay, where is the grass? Where is the meadow full of grass? So the child says, the grass is all eaten, ma'am. So uh, she said, who ate the grass? And then the child says, the cows and the buffaloes that came ate the grass. So she said, okay, where are the cows and the buffaloes? Then the child says, uh, because the cows and the buffaloes ate the grass, they went away. So they're not there in my picture. And because they ate the grass, the grass is not there. So that is also not there in my picture. So you see how stereotyping can actually uh, hamper uh, because when you when when the teacher said draw something from the countryside, everybody drew something or the other and handed it over to the teacher. But it was the student who handed a blank paper and explained why it was a blank paper. So learning can happen both ways. That day, the teacher went back with a big lesson. Okay, so. Let's look at learning in the 21st century. 
learning in the 21st century has undergone tremendous change okay and it is a continuous process so it will keep undergoing change i'd like to share some data with you guys you may be familiar with some of it okay by 2025 india will be the most populous nation on earth we're going to beat china there okay in the next two years one among four of the world's workers will be an indian next there were 687.6 million internet users in india in january 2020 the number of internet users in india increased by 128 million between 2019 and 2020 and finally internet penetration in india stood at 50% in january 2020 okay so if you google you're going to get all the statistics 62% of teachers say their homework relates to technology as in students have to use technology to do their homework okay 94% of students today say they use technology to do their homework which means they are using the internet they using a laptop they using an ipad or you know a tab whatever it is they using some sort of technology either hardware software to do a large part of their homework google now processes 40000 search queries every second on average which translates to over 3.5 billion searches per day and 1.2 trillion searches per year worldwide today there are more than 450000 words in english language seven times more than what poor shakespeare could have used in his lifetime and statistically it is said that on an average we don't use more than 150 to 160 words in our entire lifetime we keep repeating the same 150 160 words because that is what our brain's capacity is okay now a little more of the statistics jobs that didn't exist 10 years ago are now part of mainstream hiring you know 10 years ago you did not have a social media manager in an organization you didn't have digital marketing uh, the way it is today there was nothing called a user experience specialist elder care coordinator sustainability manager these are some of the new designations that are there in different organizations and very soon many of you will use technologies that don't exist today to solve problems that aren't there yet okay and the classic example i can give is what we are all going through today nobody nobody ever thought that one tiny obscure virus can change the entire world the way it has changed for all of us today okay now why am i sharing all of this with you i'm sharing all of this with you to just highlight one point that the world keeps changing and it keeps changing and how okay and that is what we need to keep in mind when we learn because learning is an activity that goes with us all our lives all our lives okay i mean there's there's a very um, nice quote by woodworth who says all activity can be called learning so far as it develops the individual in some way or the other and that is what we all do all our lives okay now let's look at learning as a function itself when you look at learning as a function you don't learn only in the classroom and you don't learn only with the tools that are there in your kitty right now you can learn from different people you can learn from different experiences you can learn in very very different ways okay so let's look at what are some of the 21st century learning factors that would become important for you as students which can also help you in your entire lifetime and i'm not just talking from a career perspective here i'm talking from a life perspective okay so that's the graph uh, that's the slide i'm going to share with you guys and i know there are a lot of boxes but to make life a little more easy for all of you i have clubbed all these factors all these learning opportunities into three buckets okay one is what we call as learning skill the second is what we call as literacy skills 
and the third is what we call as life skills okay and i'm going to take a look at each one of these and after this we can have an interactive session where you know i'll i'll be happy to answer questions or discuss points with you guys you may not have questions but we will be happy to listen to your views also okay so let's look at the first bucket which is called learning skills learning skills we have the four c's okay critical thinking creativity collaboration and communication and what do all these mean critical thinking is a mechanism that weeds out problems and replaces them with fruitful endeavors on the part of the learner okay this is what actually helps us figure out stuff when teachers and mentors are not around very often what happens when there is a problem or when there is an issue or a challenge we automatically turn to somebody who can help us resolve it and what happens when there is nobody to help you resolve a particular problem or a challenge in life that's when your critical thinking comes into picture so that is that that is why it is an important skill for us to learn and believe me when you step into an organization to work or when you you know start running your own business this is one skill that comes in handy literally on a day to day basis okay now creativity is the next one what does creativity mean it basically means adaptation you adapt okay this is the skill that empowers you to see concepts in a very different light it also leads to innovation creative thinking leads to innovation learning creativity as a skill requires you to understand that the very things you've always been doing okay so let's say last 10 years i've done something the same way it doesn't work today so i have to be creative enough to change what i knew earlier into what is going to help me now and again i'll go back to the situation that all of us are in today the pandemic has taught us so many things in a very different way right we all knew that when you came home from wherever you were you'd gone out you come back home the first thing you're supposed to do is wash your hands and feet right that's that's been part of our culture also but somewhere along the line we forgot all about it and it took us one little virus to remind us that you know when you come back home it is important that you wash your hands and feet so i'm talking about learning and unlearning from that angle and the moment you became creative yes it leads to a lot of innovation again sanitizers are a great example of that what happens when you can't wash your hands so you end up using sanitizers okay now creativity um, the next one we are talking about is collaboration collaboration is one of the toughest toughest skills that you will learn in life because there is one major barrier for collaboration and that is ego our own egos very often don't let us collaborate or allow us to collaborate with somebody else okay but this is one of the key factors for taking anything ahead in life all your relationships are based on collaboration if you don't collaborate you don't have a relationship and that is why it is important this personally for me i would uh, you know rate this as number 1 in terms of uh, learning skills and i'd say if i'm not able to collaborate if i'm not able to build relationships then if i'm not able to overcome my ego then i definitely have a problem coming key element in building collaboration or learning about collaboration is your willingness is your um, you know uh, sacrifice of personal ideas uh, working with teams working with people and looking at the greater good when does collaboration happen collaboration primarily happens when you look at the greater good of a particular project or an organization or the relationship itself okay and that's when you have to keep your ego aside and say hey you know what this relationship is important for me so i'm going to go ahead and collaborate we'll figure the rest of it out subsequently finally communication which is the mother of all c's uh and communication is 
and i'm sure as uh, you know students uh, you would realize the importance of it very very much okay it is also underrated while it is important it is also underrated because we just take it for granted we say are yaar everybody knows how to communicate i mean i've been to school i'm educated i know i have you know learned how to speak in english i know how to write so i'm a good communicator no communication is a lot more than just reading and writing communication includes something very very important and that is called interpersonal skills okay so what i communicate must be understood by the other person i can't turn around and say hey i've done my bit in communicating it's up to you guys whether you understand it or not not my problem that is not communication okay it's a two way process so that is why it becomes very very important uh, when we say that uh, this is a skill we have to focus and learn if we know that we are not good communicators okay but these are just four of you know the first bucket of learning skills now your next learning opportunity is in understanding what we call as uh, you know the information bucket or the literacy literacy skills okay today all of you agree that we are overdosed with information there is so much of it around that it's difficult to filter out you know what am i supposed to read what am i not supposed to read and especially if you're part of multiple whatsapp groups heaven help you okay so uh, the literacy bucket i have divided into three factors one is information literacy second is media literacy and the third is technology literacy okay what do we mean by information literacy it's basically understanding the various data points that are there when you gather information that's it okay it could be textual data it could be statistics it could you know it could be any any sort of numbers any sort of pictographic representation any videos all of that becomes part of your data source okay so why information literacy because it is important for you to understand what is fact and what is fiction you have to be able to separate fact from fiction you know when when i was in college and university we didn't really have this problem okay because there is so much of uh, content that is floating around today it's it's very very difficult and yet at the same time it's important for you to understand where is the truth what is the truth that is being spoken to me okay Th- because there is chronic misinformation finding the truth itself is a big job today you know so i don't know how many of you are on twitter but there is so much of misinformation that floats around on twitter that sometimes you wonder is my god what am i believing here or what am i reading here okay so it's important to understand how to figure out what is truth and what is misinformation okay and also i mean you know as the years have gone by with um all the social media platforms coming up it's a great career opportunity there are organizations that actually do only fact finding and it's a business for them okay so that's part of information literacy now next comes media literacy media literacy is you know, you know nothing but practice of identifying publishing methods outlets and sources while distinguishing between what is credible and non credible okay finding trustworthy sources of information is the biggest challenge today when you start researching on something okay because the same point or the same topic can be presented to you in so many different ways that you lose sight of what is the core issue or the core uh, subject that is being discussed okay a lot of times when you watch news or rather when you watch all the news channels uh, you don't get to hear the news at all you only get to hear opinions and diverse opinions okay uh, there is uh, as far as i am concerned and this is this is my personal opinion uh, there are probably very few channels in the world that actually do reporting okay everybody else is just voicing an opinion as far as i am concerned 
Okay, so it is important for you to understand what media literacy is because again, media is a source of information for all of you guys as students. Okay, it's a source of information for all of us for that matter. Okay, the third one is technology literacy. Technology literacy is basically related to all the knowledge that you gather about technology in the information age. Okay, computers, cloud programming, artificial intelligence, a variety of smart devices, all of these become part of your technology literacy scenario. And these become, it's important to understand these concepts. You may not be a tech person. I am not a tech person, okay? But it is important for all of us to understand these concepts because your future jobs, your future businesses, and anything disruptive that is gonna happen in all the industry verticals is gonna happen in the space of technology. And if we, are not if we are not familiar, and if we are not well-versed in due course of time with some of these concepts, we are going to miss the busts. And that is a very, very important factor. I can, you know, uh, with some of you, I can probably understand the apprehension. You'll probably say, but I'm not, a, I'm not an engineer. Okay, but why, why would I want to learn about technology? I'm not saying you have to learn about the technology. I'm saying you have to learn about the concepts of technology. Okay, I am not an engineer either. I'm a student of economics and political science. But because cybersecurity fascinated me so much, I went ahead and did a couple of courses which would help me understand the concepts in cybersecurity. And eventually it helped me write or contribute to a set of books on cybersecurity itself. So it's important to learn from a conceptual angle, okay? Tech literacy basically helps you understand the concept. That's important, okay? It, because it also helps you unmask all the alien, you know, um, alien words that you keep hearing or alien uh, subjects that come up within the technology space, these start getting unmasked when you start learning more and more about technology, okay? So this also plays an important role in the evolution of various industries, okay? And who knows, if you are familiar first and start mastering these concepts in a step-by-step -step manner, you may be the person to be shaping and guiding the future of certain technologies, okay? Remember, you need not be an engineer, you need not be uh, technically qualified, so to speak, but you need to be aware of how the technology can be applied, where can it be applied? You know, the application part is as important as building up the technology itself. Now, that is, that is where we should not be facing a gap as, you know, as uh, Make in India is supposed to be one of the, uh, you know, one of the prime focuses of taking us forward. It is important for us to have people with expertise in both areas, in the technology field itself and in the application field also. Okay. Now, both learning skills and literacy skills are great to have, but they would be useless if you do not have the necessary life skills. And what are life skills? I basically call it flips. Why do I call it flips? It's there for you to read. Flexibility, leadership, initiative, productivity, and social skills. Okay, that's why I call it flip. All right. Why flexibility? Everybody talks about it, but let me just give you a little perspective to this. Flexibility is basically adapting to changing circumstances. That's all. That's, that's what flexibility is all about. Okay. Collaboration. This is one of the most challenging skills we can learn. Okay. Why do I say most challenging? Primarily because we all grow up in a particular environment. Our upbringing has been in a particular way. Uh, so as you grow older, you start becoming set. You start becoming fixed in certain things. Okay. You're not willing to look at something different. You're not willing to look at something new. Okay. Now that is where flexibility becomes a little difficult. Okay. 
primarily because it's based on two uncomfortable ideas for us. One, when you're asked to be flexible, you're also told that your way is not the best way possible. Okay. Second, you know, you have to know and you have to admit that you've been wrong. That's what flexibility is all about. Okay. It means showing humility. Now, at an emotional intelligence level, this is one of the toughest, toughest skills to master. Okay. It takes a lifetime to get to that level, but we can start with understanding and accepting when we are wrong, uh, if not to the whole world, at least to ourselves, you know, start being honest with ourselves as far as that part goes. Okay. It also plays an important role in the next learning. Okay. Which is basically leadership skills. So when we look at leadership, one of the best factors of leadership is that a leader is a flexible person. Okay. That doesn't mean that um, he is fickle minded. No, he or she is fickle minded. No, that's not what I mean. But learning to be flexible means, um, you know, there's, there's a very nice quote, which I had read a long time back about flexibility itself. It says the stiffest tree is the most easily cracked while a bamboo or a willow survives by bending with the wind. Okay. So what is important is that you need to know when to bend and not break. That is what flexibility is all about. Okay. So let's look at leadership as a skill and what you can, you know, why it is important to learn this particular skill set. What is leadership? Leadership is basically all about setting goals getting a team of people to uh, walk with you while those goals are achieved by all of you. Okay. Leadership is also the art of influencing. The essence of leadership is influencing and not authority. Okay. It applies at every level. So you can't say that a person is a leader only when he becomes the CEO of an organization. No. Everybody can uh, display leadership qualities in whatever it is that they are doing, wherever it is they are. Okay. So leadership basically requires this one trait that helps you stand out. And that is taking initiative, which is the next learning skill that we are looking at. Okay. Initiative means nothing but being a self-starter. Okay. The moment somebody says, oh, that person is, you know, likes to take initiative. It means that the person is a self-starter, doesn't need somebody to do a push eff uh, effect there. Okay. There is no dhakka lagana, you know, that, that concept doesn't exist as far as people who take initiatives are concerned. But you know what? Initiative, taking initiative comes naturally to very few people. And again, uh, there is... There is a reason for that. It's the reason is most of us are, uh, you know, brought up in, in an environment where uh, taking initiative is not favorably looked upon. It's frowned upon. Okay. Uh, you're expected to tread the beaten path, uh, doing something different, doing something which is out of the ordinary is, um, you know, is, is looked at with a question mark saying, oh my God, uh, is this going to be successful? Uh, don't know what's going to happen. I mean, uh, we've all been recipients of, you know, that kind of behavior uh, from different people around us. So uh, what is important is that you need to be sure that, yes, I am going to do this because this is what my path is all about. Okay. And that is what a real leader actually does. Of course, rewards may not be what you expect all the time. There will be failure, but that's okay. Those are life's lessons. I call them stepping stones so that you learn and then you move on and you don't make the same mistake again. But that should not stop you from taking initiatives. Okay. The next skill that we're looking at or the next learning opportunity is all about productivity. Why do I say productivity? Because uh, this is important for all of us, whether you decide to become, um, you know, business owners or you try to, you, you become, um, you know, uh, part of an organization somewhere. Your ability to complete work in an appropriate given time is what productivity is all about. Okay. 
So as, as somebody who's part of an organization, you will be expected to contribute to the growth of the organization. And that's what your productivity stroke efficiency is all about. Now, if you're going to be a business owner, and this again becomes important because if you are not productive, if you're not efficient, your business is not going to make any money. It's as simple as that. Okay. So you have to understand what are your strengths and work according to those strengths as far as building your productivity quotient is concerned. Okay. Last but not the least, we are going to talk about social skills. Social skills is something which, you know, um, I'm reminded of what Albert Einstein had said um, when he spoke about technology. He said, I fear the day when technology surpasses human interaction. We will have generations of idiots to deal with. Okay. Now, are we getting there? I hope not. Because when you see people interacting less with each other and more with their devices, that's when we have to get worried. That's when we have to uh, fear that social skills are going to take a backseat. Why are they important? Social skills are important because everything is built on relationships, guys. And relationships happen only when you have social skills. Relationships don't happen when you message each other on WhatsApp or when you message each other on social media. Those are platforms that can facilitate the growth of a relationship. Okay. But end of the day, if your social skills are not there, even on those platforms, you're going to lose that relationship. Okay. So whether you're building your own business or whether you are building business for an organization, how you deal with other people, the etiquette, the manners, the mannerisms, the language you use, how you communicate are all part of social skills. Okay. The biggest advantage that uh, the present generation has is, you know, you guys are, you've grown up with social media. Okay. It was there uh, for, for a lot of you as part of your childhood itself. Okay. So um, you guys are probably what I would call as uh, digital natives or maybe, you know, one generation um, ahead of the digital natives. We are all, we belong to a generation called digital migrants. We had to migrate to the digital platform. We had to learn from scratch as to what it was. I'm sure all of you have family members, you know, who would have pestered you saying, I want to get on Facebook. I want to get on Twitter. I want to get on Instagram. Teach me how I can do it. Will you be my friend there? You know, things like that. We've all gone through, through it. Um, you know, for, for the longest time, uh, you know, uh, when I became part of the social media network, uh, a lot of people asked me, are, are your children friends with you on social media? I said, yeah, they are friends with me. Why? So they said, oh my God, that's such a, you know, it's, it's so refreshing to hear that um, you, you're connected with your children on social media because a lot of times kids don't want to connect with parents on social media for the obvious reasons. Uh, so I said, no, I don't think um, there are any obvious reasons as far as my kids are concerned. I mean, um, they've, they've just connected with me. So, you know, uh, social skills become important for us to move ahead in life. Okay. And uh, everything that uh, you build around you is based on how good you are with people around you. Okay. Now, if you're not good with people, then there is definitely a gap in the way you communicate and the way you socialize. And that's, that's a huge, huge learning opportunity for all of us. Okay. So when I look at uh, learning opportunities, now these are, so that's uh, four and five, nine and three, 12, basically a dozen of them that you can look at in terms of where are my gaps? What am I supposed to be doing to build myself up? And then start focusing on how you want to learn. Today, there are a variety of options in terms of how you want to learn these things, you know, face-to-face uh, -face, uh, learning from uh, subject matter experts. There are, you know, online uh, uh, classes, courses that are being held. There are YouTube videos that you can watch and learn. 
uh, TED Talks, of course, you know, one of the best learning uh, channels today. If you want to learn about anything, uh, so many people who write about these subjects, the platform is filled with different learning channels. But primarily, my, uh, you know, my two bit, uh, if I were in your place as a student, I would typically focus on, you know, these 12 factors and then start preparing myself, uh, you know, to face the journey of life. And uh, with that, I would like to end whatever I have to share with you guys. Uh, and I have a quote for everyone by George Evans, who said, everyone learns, everyone can learn. It's just not on the same day and in the same way. We all have our own styles and ways that we learn. And I think we should just focus on that. Thank you very much for giving me a patient hearing. I'll be happy to uh, interact with you guys, answer any questions if you have, or we'll be happy to listen to whatever views you have. Thank you. Thank you, Uma. Students, please raise your hands if you have any question. We'll address the question one by one. Uh, okay. Uh, Dilip, please ask your question. Good afternoon, ma'am. I just want to ask a question regarding your point, which is about learning skills, which is including critical thinking and creative thinking. So, sure. uh, if you see in Japan and over there, there are like lakhs of patent rights which are registered every year. When it comes to India, they are not even crossing like thousands. And we are lacking behind in recognizing those critical thinkers. In we don't have such sources. We, yeah. we feel happy when we get to know that one of our Indian is a CEO of Microsoft, Google, but we are forgetting the owner is different. We are just resting our, our happiness by knowing that they are working, that they are CEO, but we are not expanding and we are not uh, providing the required sources to let them become the owners. So do you think, do we have the resources exactly without any politics in between? to bring them into limelight. And I feel like in every educational institute, there should be a creative skill cell, creative cell, which will boost up them. So what are your views on Oh, um, at, at the onset, I will agree with the last statement that you've made, uh, that every educational institution must have a creative cell. They must encourage creative thinking. Um, absolutely in sync with you there. Uh, it's unfortunate. And what you said is also true. You know, uh, we feel very happy when, uh, you know, we realize that uh, uh, there is a Sundar Pichai, there is an Indra Nooyi, uh, you know, and, and so many other uh, well-qualified, distinguished people who lead organizations, but they are not owners of those organizations. Yes, I agree. But however, I will also look at, you know, uh, the Ratan Tatas and the Anand Mahindras and the Mukesh Ambani's of this world, they are also leading organizations. Uh, you know, those, they, are, they are great role models for all of us, uh, you know, when we look at some of the things. I mean, I, I would encourage you people to read the entire uh, history of Tata Industries and see from where they have grown and how they've grown into what they are today. Okay, so uh, we have enough local role models uh, you know, when I say local, I mean Indian role models who have gone on to um, build organizations, acquire organizations, and uh, we should focus on that. Uh, yes, there is a lot of uh, angst and frustration when it comes to uh, innovation, creativity. I can understand where you're coming from when you say uh, patenting, unfortunately, in our country has not really moved the way it should have moved. Um, we need to be smart about it. Our processes and systems for, uh, you know, getting patents and uh, getting our intellectual property policy in place um, and, to be, and to make it a dynamic policy and not, you know, an archaic one which gets reviewed once in 40 years or once in 50 years. No, that's not the idea. But yes, um, things have started to change. In the last seven to eight years, I will say, 
uh, there, there has been a movement forward in terms of uh, our own people recognizing uh, the value of good research, the value of innovation, the value of uh, being creative, the value of producing something nationally, okay, in the domestic market. That is there, but there are hurdles also. And it's important that we all rally together to overcome those hurdles together. That's, that's my two bit, uh, but I will agree with you when uh, you say education institutions uh, become the foundation for something like this. Yes. I, I hope that answers your, your question and the points you've raised. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Uma. Uh, we'll take next question. Uh, the user is RIM870. Please ask, ask your question. Good afternoon, ma'am. My question is that when we learn something, that, so there is a safe doubt whether we should do it or not. And that will, uh, that will result in declining in our efficiency and effectiveness. So how we cope up with our self-doubt? Uma, I find it very difficult to understand. Is this the case with you as well? Yeah, yeah. I lost her in between. Um, so right. if you can repeat the question. Good afternoon, ma'am. My question is, like, how to uh, cope up with our self-doubt? Like, when we learn new things, so there is a self-doubt that will lead to decrease in our effective, uh, effectiveness and efficiency. So how we cope up with our self-doubt? Could you understand the question? Put, uh, bring our best. Okay, so let me let me rephrase that to see if I've understood you correctly. You're saying when you learn new things, uh, there there are times when you have self doubt, yes. and that brings down the efficiency or your productivity as a student. So yes, how do you cope with that? Is that what you're asking yes. me? Yes, okay, okay, great. Uh, it's it's good that you have self doubts. Okay, because if you don't have a doubt, then you, you're not questioning yourself. Okay, so what is important is, like I said, right on the first slide, learning is all about questioning. Okay, and it's not questioning somebody else. It's questioning yourself also. All right. So what happens when you question yourself? You start looking for answers. You want responses. You want, you want somebody to help you with those answers. And that's when you go back to a teacher, a mentor, somebody who can help you with those answers okay now even with self-doubt please go back to one or two people you trust you learn with you're comfortable with and go and share the doubt that you have that is my sincere sincere suggestion because don't live with the self-doubt self-doubt is not going to help you move ahead it's going to stop you in fact it's going to become the biggest barrier for you so the only solution at that point of time is to go and ask somebody you trust and say, hey, you know what? This is a doubt. I have this thing in my head. I'm not able to get it out of my head. How do I deal with it? Now, if it's a person who has your, uh, you know, uh, welfare at heart, he or she is going to guide you correctly. He or she is going to ask you to do certain things which will remove the self-doubt. That is what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, and that's how you move ahead. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Uma. We have next question from user is nine six eight. Please ask your question. Hello. Good afternoon, ma'am. This is Jeet from West Bengal. Uh, my question is on your vision. How dangerous would be memorizing each and everything in life and not learning since learning is the topic for today? Good heavens, Jeet. Memorizing is, is possibly the last thing you need to do in a learning environment. Okay. Learning and memorizing are two different things altogether. Uh, yes, memorize, yeah, memorizing is short term. Because the chances of your memory failing you for whatever reasons can, you know, uh, can be very high. And uh, you guys are really young. But as you grow older, you realize that even memorizing is a task. You know, it's, it's a huge, huge uh, stress on your pea-sized brain that all of us have. Uh, no way. I mean, learning. So 
uh, you know, there, there's a very interesting uh, TED talk that I heard. Um, I'll, I'll share the link with uh, Swati since, you know, she's been coordinating with me. I think all of you should uh, go through that. It's, it's about 16, 17 minutes. And this gentleman talks about learning being an emotional engagement. Okay. When do you learn? Uh, when do you remember things? After you learn is only when there is an emotional moment uh, when you've learned something. Okay. Uh, the emotional moment could be anything. And he gives a fantastic example, you know. So he says, um, there, is th there is this lecture that's happening and um, this guy is talking about somebody who has uh, some sort of a bacterial or a fungal infection on his scalp. And this guy goes to a theater to watch a movie. Okay, so when he goes, he sits on his uh, allotted chair and, uh, you know, typically like all of us do, he slides down on his chair with his head resting against, uh, you know, the, 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 the backrest of the chair and watches the movie and he gets out. And then the next person who want, who's watching the movie on that chair also does the same thing. What are the chances of the second person getting that bacterial fungal infection? Okay, now this is an example he gives, but he's, he has a very relevant point when he gives this example. He says, guess what? In that half an hour lecture that I was listening to, nothing else connected with me. And to this day, when I go and watch a movie in a theater, I don't rest my head against the backrest. So you see, that was a learning for this gentleman. Now, learning can happen in very, very different ways for all of us. But yes, when that happens, we are emotionally invested at that point of time. And it stays with us for a very, very long period. Memorizing doesn't do that. Memorizing, you can forget at any given point of time. How many of you actually remember uh, phone numbers? right? We don't because today we all have mobile phones and the numbers are stored very easily. But when I was growing up, we had to remember numbers because there were no mobile numbers. There was no mobile phone. I mean, either you carried a diary with all the phone numbers or, you know, you had to memorize. So there were these five or six numbers, which you could just rattle off telephone numbers, which you could rattle off. You knew your residence phone number and you knew your dad or mom's office phone number. Because those were your emergency numbers and they were drilled into your head. Today, you ask me, except for my own number, I don't remember anybody's number yet. That's what memorizing does. Okay, but learning on the other hand, you know, concepts that you learn when you're in school and college, if they're, you know, if you're emotionally invested at that point of time, you'll never forget them. I hope that answers the question, Jeet. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. You're Thank you, ma'am. Uh we have one more question. Uh, username is RIM832. Please ask your question. Good afternoon, ma'am. My name is Ms. Khan. I'm from Lucknow. And my question is, what are the mindset tools and all the abilities that will be needed for students to be leaders in future? I'm sorry, I couldn't understand you clearly. Your voice kept breaking. Could you repeat the question, please? Yes, ma'am. So what are the mindset tools and all the abilities that will be needed for students to be leaders in future? Uh, can you speak a little, can you keep your mic a little away from your mouth, please? I think yeah, it's too near to your face. What are the mindset tools or the abilities that will be needed for students to be leaders in future? Okay, mindset or abilities for students yes. to be leaders in the future. Is that your question? Yes, yes ma'am. Well, um, in terms of mindset, I will say um, a never say die attitude, which means you need to be positive. That's, that's a very, very important uh, factor, um, you know, to move on in life. I'm not just saying from a leadership angle, but just generally to move on in life also. Very important for you to be positive. Uh, you need to have, you need to build the ability to take initiative. That's a very, very important thing. Okay. And it could be initiative in anything, you know, not necessarily uh, in, a, in a given uh, task or in a given role, but you need to be able to take the initiative, which allows you uh, 
to express to voice out what you feel you know what what you go through uh, what your thoughts are so when you take initiative you'll start talking about it you'll start communicating about it now that is a mindset that i would definitely like to see a lot of the younger generation you know uh, build for themselves uh, in terms of uh, you know doing something uh, which will not only benefit themselves but which will benefit society around okay people around you uh, problem solving is another mindset that i would look at and result orientation is the other one that i would look at you know these are these are some of the things which i think all of you um, should focus on uh, because whatever it is that you do uh, you should be able to solve or resolve certain things around you and there has to be a result there has to be uh, it can be a tangible or an, a non tangible result that doesn't matter but the effect has to be felt now those are mindsets that you work on you know so don't do things just for the sake of doing it they, you have to build an ecosystem around whatever you do and this is this is what the ecosystem should consist of we started questioning ourselves you know the world is changing and so we are one thing is always constant is our ability to learn new things so my question is what factors do you consider to learn the most often when planning for the future wow that's such a loaded question my dear a lot of people in their 40s are also not very sure what they want to do with their lives okay and you guys are still in your early 20s but um hey let me answer that to the best of my ability uh, my first thought is um, it's okay to be confused uh, no harm in being confused as long as you are looking to find finding an answer okay uh, there are times when i am confused at this stage in life about things around me okay uh, decisions that i have to take um, you know things that i need to build uh, things that i need to uh, learn unlearn so it's it's okay to be confused perfectly all right but what is important is when you're confused how you move ahead in terms of getting clarity as far as that confusion is concerned so that is that is what will help you uh move ahead in life okay so it could be um talking to someone to clear that confusion it could be um you know uh, finding answers through reading through listening to someone so your answers can come from different ways in from different sources okay but like i said you know somebody asked me about that self doubt get the self doubt cleared that clarity is important for you to move ahead okay now uh, will it end with one confusion no there will be confusion galore as you move ahead in life there will there will be dilemmas uh, that you will face and you will have to make choices and and some of them will be very tough choices in life now and that is why it is important to have a mentor in life uh, a teacher you know when i say a teacher i don't mean an academic teacher but somebody who you can go to and uh, discuss and talk could be your parents uh, either one of them or both of them could be a sibling could be a very very uh, you know close friend uh, could be one of the teachers that you have built a great rapport and a relationship with could be an uncle aunt anybody it could be anyone in this world but it's very very important to build a, or to get a mentor for yourself uh, to get somebody who can uh, sort of show you the mirror and then the choices become that much more simpler they won't be easy choices but they will become that much more simpler because then you see the mirror and then somebody else is showing you the mirror and telling you hey you know what i see what you see and then you can make your choices after that but ultimately the choices in life will have to be yours and only then will you be satisfied with the choices that you've made i hope that answers the question yeah thank you okay thank you thank you we have one more question from shubham shubham please ask your question good afternoon ma'am good afternoon ma'am i am shubham gaikar from pune 
एक्चुअली मैम आई वॉन्ट टू डू द बिजनेस इन फ्यूचर सो वॉट द स्किल्स एंड वॉट एटीट्यूड आई शुड इम्प्रूव नाउ फ्रॉम नाउ Shubham, the fact that you want to do business and you're clear about it is the first right attitude. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm actually in that also. I was confused and many opposes are there. It will be not uh, helpful or it will create a uh, many problems and many more. But uh, still, I am confirm about that. I want to do that. Sure. Great. So I must tell you uh, my own experience when I decided to become an entrepreneur. I. I come from um, an army background so my father was in the army I got married into an army family so uh, you know literally dur dur tak we did not have any businessman in the family okay so um, so when I decided to quit my corporate job and and I quit my corporate job when I was you know the global head of uh, you know a particular division in an in a multinational so I was at a fairly senior position and when i quit the first thing uh, i was told is that boss hamare khandan mein kisi ne business nahi kiya hai what makes you think you're going to succeed okay yes, so that was the first first question the second question and of course this is, this came from my mom and it was it was very cute of her to ask me that question you know she says jab tum business karoge will you be able to earn how much ever you you were earning in your previous job will you make that much money at least so i had to tell her I said, "Ma, I'm hoping to make more money than what I was earning in my previous <laughs> exactly job. Right. That's the whole idea of yeah. That's the whole idea of doing business, right? Yes, so yes, there will be people who will express their doubts, and they're right in their own way because they don't want you to do something which uh, they think may become a failure point. Uh, but these are barriers that you will have to overcome by a uh, few things. One, you need to be very clear about what business you want to get into." uh look at the opportunities that that business is going to give you what what sort of problems will you solve with the product or the service that you're offering in your business okay how can it impact society what uh what is the existing market so your market research has to be very very clear okay you need okay. to understand what you're taking to market how is the revenue model going to work so in short you must have a full fledged business plan before you actually launch into something see because at the end of the day you have you are investing money i mean it could be your own money could be money that you've borrowed from your parents or somewhere else but it it is money that you're investing and that money has to be put to good use okay ma'am so unless you have a full fledged business plan my recommendation is don't get into one work on it okay. take your time build it up and then you can start your business okay ma'am okay okay ma'am thank you all right thank you uh, uma can we take a few more questions i hope sure, you have time sure sure yes yes, yes. please hello ma'am uh, this is vishal ja i have a question for you uh, that uh, how we tackle those anxiety and appre- apprehensiveness uh, that we when we start something doing new things we have a lot of anxiety whether it's going to happen or not what people would say so how to tackle all these anxiety and apprehensiveness uh, so that i have a question ah okay uh first of all uh, please accept that anxiety is very natural it's very normal okay all of us go through anxiety pangs all of us go through uh, you know concerns in our head um but as you grow older okay but uh, when you're young yes uh, i think the factor that lo kya kahenge uh, will make some amount of difference but i would still say you need to keep that aside because end of the day uh what you do should not negatively impact people around you okay and uh, it should not legally ethically it has to be the right thing that you do then you don't have to worry about what anybody else says okay but anxiety mm-hmm. pangs about doing new things it's perfectly all right yaar because unless you do new things how do you know what your experience is going to be 
right yes um, let me let me ask you a question uh, have you done any kind of adventure sports yes ma'am what have you done like oh, yeah yes ma'am once we have done a skating skating yes ma'am okay so uh, what kind of skating was this was this uh, ice skating or was this uh, roller skating what kind of skating no, was this ice skating ice skating ice right skating. yeah so how did you feel when you got on to your uh, skates for the first time and you rolled down that huge cliff of ice? in the last of the ice skating yeah but, see thank uh, you very much a... you, you answer the question yourself so in the beginning you will always have anxiety pangs okay as you start getting more comfortable with the situation as you start discovering uh, nicer things about the situation you start mastering your entire uh, what do you say anxiety you you start getting over your anxiety pangs all right and by the end of that journey the way you became comfortable the way you felt nice about achieving something it's the same thing in life also so irrespective of what new thing you try first you will be anxious and once you try it see it's it's the first jump that is going to give you the anxiety pang once you start doing it time and again time and again you get conditioned to it you get used to it and then it becomes a matter of habit that is why they say whatever you do do it for 21 days continuously because you know survey research has proved that it takes 21 days for the human mind to get conditioned to something thank you ma'am thank you ma'am really appreciate you're welcome thank you uma we have last two question uh, the username sure. kr001 please ask your question uh, good evening ma'am this is satya here yes satya uh, ma'am going into the management sector and the corporate world what are the best ways one can develop soft skills because we can all agree that soft skills are as important as the hard skills absolutely uh, soft skills sometimes become more important than your hard skills because a lot of times uh, you know you may admit that your hard skills you you're not uh, familiar you're not uh, you know uh, you're not an expert but it's your soft skills that can actually get you the project get you the deal uh so i would say it's very important um today of course there are you know different ways in which you can learn your soft skills um first identify what are the gaps what kind of skill sets you want to build for yourself what are your strengths and then go ahead and sign up there are so many courses available i'm sure your college would also have conducted you know sessions for you guys uh very important for you to participate in those sessions and be an active learner don't be a passive learner you know don't just go sit there and listen to what the other person is saying and you know come back and say okay theek hai i will use this whenever i want to use it you need to be an active learner in in soft skill sessions because that's the only way um, you will realize what you where you need to put in the effort okay and what kind of effort you need to put in so um, like i said today the channels are plenty for you to learn you need to identify what you want to learn and how you want to learn but yes i agree soft skills are very very important and some of the things that we have spoken uh, in today's session in terms of you know communication flexibility and these are all soft skills that, that you would you would typically you know end up learning in in different sessions uh, that can be conducted for you guys and there are so many experts who are doing this across the country Thank you thank you so much ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you Uma. We have last question from user rim704. Please ask your question. Sure. Yes ma'am myself Mr. Prakash Kuswaha from Gorakhpur. Now my yeah. first question is uh, how to be stable on our commitments because every person is just committed but uh, nobody can uh, stable on this commitment. How to we do, do this? so if i understand you correctly you are asking me how do i stay firm to a commitment i have made right yes ma'am 
सो मतलब जो बात जो जुबान दी है वो जुबान के पक्के होने चाहिए है ना यस मैम यस मैम आई लाइक यू कैन से दैट इफ आई कमिटेड टू स्टडी फॉर रन फॉर आवर जीन्स फॉर आवर शेड्यूल बट नो बडी कैन स्टेबल मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ सर्किमस्टांसेस uh just uh, give up ah, them okay so yeah. basically basically you're saying i shouldn't be giving it up i should be sticking to whatever i promise myself or i i commit to myself or i commit to others doesn't matter yes. what it is right yes sir yeah. so so the only the only way you will stick to commitments that you've made to yourself is when you see the benefit it has to come from you okay because if yes. somebody else is forcing you to abhi i'm i'm just going to give you an example uh, if somebody forces you to go to a gym every day to exercise and be healthy okay yes, you will you will do it for one week you'll do it for two weeks you'll probably do it for a month but the second month you will give up because somebody else is forcing you to do it it has to come from you you need to understand why you want to exercise okay and maybe exercising in the gym is not an option for you but you would love to go out and exercise right you're an outdoor person so you may want to go swimming walking cycling outside instead of exercising in the gym right so yes. you have to find the channel through which your commitment can be fulfilled or the platform on which your commitment can be fulfilled and the benefit you see for yourself so i'll tell you i mean my my biggest challenge when i was a student uh, was to get up in the morning i don't know how many of you face that okay i'm not an early morning person i'm a late night person i can study late into the night i don't have a problem sitting up till 3 o'clock 4 o'clock in the morning but i hate to get up at 3 o'clock 4 o'clock in the morning to study okay and i know a lot of students who get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and do a damn good job of studying at that point of time all right so and i would get to hear this from my mom very often saying that yaar baaki bacche itne jaldi uth jate hain you know uh, they get up morning early morning and study why can't you do that and i did try okay i tried because um i wanted to please my mom uh, saying that yeah okay i'll i'll also get up in the morning but i gave up i gave up after 15 days and i told i went back and i told my mom i said mom what is your ultimate objective your ultimate objective is that i should be a good student right whether i get up at 4 o'clock in the morning or whether i sleep at 4 o'clock in the morning and be a good student it's all right yes i will be a good student okay so it is important that you identify the objective the end objective of doing that act of making that commitment aap commitment kyun kar rahe ho किसके लिए कर रहे हो अगर किसी और के लिए कमिटमेंट कर रहे हो तो वो कभी नहीं आप फुलफिल करोगे अगर वो आप अपने आप के लिए कर रहे हो देन यू विल मूव माउंटेन्स टू मेक दैट हैपन राइट आई मीन सिंपल थिंग यू विल मूव माउंटेन्स इफ यू मेड अ कमिटमेंट टू गो एंड मीट योर गर्लफ्रेंड राइट बट इफ योर गर्लफ्रेंड इज पेस्टरिंग यू कि भाई कॉफी के लिए चलो लेट्स गो आउट फॉर डिनर and then you really can't fulfill that commitment because there are other things that you have on your mind you will not do it but if you've made the commitment and you if you've promised to take her out you'll do whatever it takes because it's your credibility end of the day right yes, so yes. jo aap commitment karoge agar aap dil se nahi kar rahe ho na to wo kabhi fulfill nahi ho payega sure ma'am yeah yes ma'am was... and commitment is also necessary for the management student it is right commitment is necessary for everyone boss not just management students it is important yes. for all students and for everyone every human being because unless you commit how do you know what you're going to do in life right yes, no wo kaun si salman khan ki koi dialogue hai na commitment ke upar i forget the movie i forget what the dialogue yes, is yes ma'am uh, uh, wanted Wanted. Wanted, yes. एक बार जो कमिटमेंट हाँ एक बार जो कमिटमेंट कर ली तो मैं खुद की भी नहीं सुनता राइट समथिंग लाइक दैट सो दैट्स व्हाट इट इज दैट्स व्हाट कमिटमेंट इज ऑल अबाउट थैंक यू थैंक यू
Thank you, Uma. We have one last question. Uh, sure. Room 641, please ask your question. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Um, I'm Megha. Uh, I want to ask what we have interest in uh, learning so many things. Um, but and we're trying though to do to do to do those uh, one after another, and uh, so and we become restless uh, doing those things one after the uh, other. So how can how can we be uh, calm and like uh, no? Uh, how can we be? Uh, how can do that? Um, I'm sorry, I lost the last part of your question. Uh, how can we be calm and? How can we decide one thing? Hello. Okay. First of all, lost, can you hear me? She's back. She's back. She's back now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. First of all, a virtual high five. That is a challenge I have lived through all my life. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I'm the kind of person who says, my God, there is so much to learn. There is so much to do. I want to do this. I want to do that. I mean, if I was on my I would be an astrologer, astronomer, uh, neurosurgeon. Would have loved to study all these things. Yeah, yeah. Okay? But yeah, there, uh, it's, it's just one lifetime and uh, mm -hmm. so many things to learn and do. Um, what I would uh, recommend is that uh, focus on building your expertise in one or two areas but the other areas can be good to know good to learn areas okay because ultimately if you have to build a career or a business and something you need to have some sort of expertise okay you need to build some sort of uh, capability in uh, in that field okay so pick one or two areas that would really really interest you and start building your capabilities there. The others you can keep adding to your learning kitty as and when time permits. Okay. So, um, I mean, even today I am, I'm studying, I'm, you know, doing courses online because it's a locked in period. Um, I've just applied for a PhD. Uh, so there is no end to what you want to learn. It's just that you'll have to prioritize and see what, what is important and where your passion really lies. So focus on your passion and focus on building capability in that passion. And then you can either, you know, build a career out of it or make a business out of it. That's, that's my uh, two bit as far as your challenge is concerned. Thank you so much, Uma. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it was a wonderful session and you took more questions than uh, our question and answer time was more than probably your actual session time. And thank you so much for that. I'm uh, glad because I think it's question answers that make it more interactive and so much more fun. Absolutely. Uh, and you clarify so many doubts. You give them a lot of clarity. And I hope that with that clarity, they would be able to uh, think ahead very clearly. Uh, though it's something is the biggest challenge for all of us also till date. <laughs> but sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right. yes. Uh, Swati also would like to say a few words. Swati, please take it ahead. Thank you, ma'am, for accepting our inv invitation and sharing your, you know, sparing your valuable time. Thank you so much, Swati. It's been a pleasure interacting with all of you. And we uh, look forward to have you on campus, ma'am. Anytime. Uh, we'll be happy as soon as, you know, the travel becomes a little easier. I'll be happy to come over and uh, meet all of you in person.